G'day friends, it's Andrew Goodall here again from Nature's Image Photography and what you're looking at right now is my very first time-lapse video shot on the Panasonic Lumix G9. It's not very good and neither was my second attempt but that's kind of the point. I'm still learning and in this video I'm going to show you what I've learned so far about setting up your G9 to shoot time-lapse. Keep watching to see my results improve and if you really learn something new about your camera you can always say thank you by buying me a coffee. The link is in the information below. Now let's take a look at my third effort shot on the same afternoon as the other two. It's still not very good but before we go any further I want you to notice something. See the big black bars on either side of the video. That's because it's showing in the camera's native 4x3 aspect ratio. That's despite the fact that I had my camera set to shoot 16x9 for a widescreen. I just want you to remember that because it will become relevant in a few minutes. But now let's get started with setting up your Lumix G9 for shooting time lapse video. We start by turning the release mode dial all the way to the last position, which is something I've never done before I started on this project. This is the mode for shooting time lapse and also for shooting stop motion animation, which is something I haven't tackled yet. Now it's into the menu and it turns out the whole thing is surprisingly easy. In the first part of the menu there's a section for time lapse animation. Here you choose between time lapse shot and stop motion animation and of course what we're looking at here is time lapse. Under start time I've always elected to start now. But you can set it to a timer, meaning you could shoot tomorrow's sunrise without having to get out of bed to do it. And now here's the important part. You need to choose the shooting interval, which is how often a photo will be taken, and the image count, which is how many photos will be taken in the set. Under shooting interval, you choose how many seconds or even how many minutes between each shot. Under image count, you can select up to 9,999 shots for a single time lapse. Be sure when you're done to click set to lock in your selection. So you've just seen me select 20 shots with a photo every 10 seconds. I'll come back to those numbers in a moment, but first let's finish off my video. I only have to press the button once, then the camera takes over and the sequence is underway. There's a counter near the top right of the screen and it'll count down shot by shot. In this case one shot every 10 seconds. With 20 shots in the set that comes to 3 minutes and 20 seconds in total. I'm not going to ask you to sit through all of that, so let's skip ahead to the end as we reach the final couple of frames. When the counter reaches zero, the camera will let you know the job's done and ask you if you want to create your video now. You don't have to do it right away, and in a few minutes I'll show you what happens if you decide to finish your video later, but let's finish this one now. First you have a few decisions to make. For recording quality, I've just been using the default option, but you can change that to suit your preference. You can choose to capture your time lapse in reverse if you want to, but most importantly you need to select the frame rate. Options are measured in frames per second and the lower the number, the slower the playback and the longer your video will be. Then click OK, on the next screen click Yes, and after a bit of processing time your video is ready to play. Now I admit this may just be the least impressive time lapse video ever made, but for what it's worth that's the basic process taken care of but I still have a fair bit more to tell you before we're done. Remember those black bars on either side of the image that I mentioned at the start? Now I had changed my aspect ratio to 16x9 to suit the widescreen format, but the video still came out as a 4x3. That's because I've always been shooting raw files, and if you shoot a raw file in 16x9, that's the way it will present on camera, but that crop isn't locked in. The uncropped RAW file is still there in the background and that's what your time lapse video is created from. So this got me thinking about what sort of photos I needed to take for a better result. The first and most obvious thing was to switch to JPEG whenever I'm shooting time lapse. If you also want RAW files to edit afterwards, you have the option of shooting RAW plus JPEG. You'll have the RAW images but your time lapse will be constructed from the JPEGs. And then because all of the adjustments are going to be made in the camera, I have to consider how I want my JPEGs to look. Here's what I've been doing for most of the videos since that first day, and happily all the changes can be made quickly and easily in the Function 2 Quick menu. First I go to Quality and select JPEG. As I said, you could select RAW Plus if you prefer. Then I go to Picture Setting and select my 16x9 aspect ratio. Now because I want consistency in my colours throughout the entire sequence, I go to white balance and instead of my usual AWB I've been using daylight. And to add a bit of punch to the impact of the videos, 
I go to photo style and instead of my usual standard setting I've been using Vivid. Of course these are all personal choices and you might prefer to do things differently, but these are all decisions that need to be made before you start shooting. There are just two things left on my list now. I switch my mode dial over from my usual manual mode into aperture priority. That's because I want the changes to the exposure over the passage of time to be as seamless as possible. And finally, and this is important, I put my focus mode to manual focus. Even if you use AFS or back button focus, the autofocus system is still run by the camera and as I discovered in making this time lapse, at some point the system stops paying attention and you lose focus. Happily this was close to home so I was able to go back and try again with manual focus and it's very easy to see the difference. Now as we're looking at a night sequence here I just remembered something else I need to tell you. If you're doing night shots at very long exposures, make sure you turn off your long shutter speed noise reduction. And here's a little example to explain why. If you're shooting one photo every 10 seconds, but it gets dark enough for your shutter speed to slow down to say a 6 second exposure, then each photo is going to take an extra 6 seconds to process if noise reduction is on, meaning each exposure is going to take 12 seconds, and that's going to play havoc with your 10 second interval timeline. Ok, we're almost done, but I still have to tell you what happens if you decide to record your time lapse video later instead of doing it right away. This could just be because you're in a hurry to take some more photos, or it could be because you've made your video already but you're not happy with the speed and you want to try again with a different frame rate. This had me a bit stumped at first because when you return to review your time lapse set, you'll find a few options for viewing the JPEG photos but nothing that lets you record a new video. I tapped everything on the screen for a while looking for a solution before I realised that you have to get there by a different route. So go to the menu and down to the review section and there's a section there just for time lapse video. Click that and it will show you only your time lapse sets organised into their separate folders. Now when I choose the one I want and click enter, I'm back to the same screen we saw earlier. This frame rate of 12.5 you see here is the one I used to create my first time lapse from this set. This time I'm going to choose a faster frame rate to record a shorter video, then complete the process and let the camera do its thing from there. So now I'll show you both versions of video taken from that time lapse set. The sequence was created from 360 photos taken over an hour at 10 second intervals. That's 6 photos every minute, and yes there is a little bit of basic math to be done before you start shooting to make sure you get your timing right. First here's the one you just saw recorded at 25 frames per second, and then the second one you'll see was recorded earlier at 12.5 frames per second, and so it's obviously twice as long. Now it doesn't really matter which one you like better. The main takeaway from this is that you can create your video now, or you can create it later. But it's all done in camera, so you need to make sure these decisions are made before you delete the photos and format your memory card. If you're not sure which frame rate works best for you, it's not a bad idea to create a couple of versions. And finally, here's how all that looks when it's transferred to the computer. You can see I don't just have the two video files, I also have the 360 JPEGs that went into them. Now ultimately I'm sure I'll be deleting most of that content, but if you do have a really good shoot, you might just end up with a few good standalone still photos as well. And that's my look at time lapse photography on the Panasonic Lumix G9. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you've been curious about creating some time lapse work of your own, I hope this has given you the confidence to go ahead and give it a try. Now I'll finish with one final and very different clip I just finished, mixing time lapse with a bit of VFR video. I'm Andrew Goodall, this is Nature's Image Photography, thanks for watching.